Hey, Endless Honeymoon Podcast listeners, if you love this show, the best way to support us is to buy some merch. We have a coffee mug, we have an amazing beach towel, and we have some very cute short shorts in many sizes. That's right. So if you want to get yours now and make your butt look like Natasha's butt, go to EndlessHoneymoonPod.com slash shop. Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Neighbor edition. Our neighbor, Nick Thune, a.k.a. Wilson from Tool Time with Tim Taylor. <laughs> a.k.a. Back. the easiest guest you can have on your show. We're okay. just so lazy and we forget. And, you know, we're like, who wants to do this in 20 minutes? How about I walk across a yard, knock on a door, and we'll have a guest tonight who's an amazing you comedian. You didn't do that, though. You just texted me. That's true, but it's a, it was a digital. Yeah, you didn't even walk to get him. It was a digital yard. Yeah. Okay, next time we're gonna actually like send send an, a, a text out and uh, the nice thing is though is we do we are getting our message he's sending and I'm receiving it on the same cell tower basically. So. That's so true. It's like the text never even truly had. We should get a tin can yeah. with a string situation going on. Wouldn't that be cute? Yeah. I sometimes do that with your son. No. I'll sometimes no, you no, no. <laughs> that joke didn't feel good as it came out. I'll be now, honest. Can we say from head to toe, Nick is always the best dressed. Not just comic, but person that we know. I wouldn't say that. You I have th- your own thing, honey, but he's just like, <laughs> look, you had, by the way, Moshe went to a vintage shop today to pick up a lamp we bought and he had two different vans on. Well, yeah, and I, I was, said, are you sure? Did you go out in public like that? Because I already was roasting him in the house and then he came back with the lamp and I said, did you go in public like that? And they're not two cute vans. They're two old ones. They're the one checkered, one white, both dirty. Nick? Fa- now you have a new Instagram page. I think that's good for Moshe. Called Thank me you. Show you fashion. You know everything about fashion. You you stand by this. Hold on. Before I even let him answer, I wasn't doing it as a fashion statement. I was like rolling out of bed. But I was. You were in public. Excuse me, Natasha. Let me <laughs> plead my case. I was okay, and um, I will take. Moshe's case now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. And b- by the way, may I say you look dashing in your robes this evening. <laughs> thank um, you. I was I was Cobra Kai binge hungover. Till I, I, oh, yeah, yeah. that's what you've been doing downstairs? That's right. I yeah, got, your husband was busy watching seven episodes while you were sleeping <laughs> in bed last night doing I nothing. I got home from doing a set uh, uh, at, at Supernova Comedy at probably 1130. Natasha was asleep. I snuck mm-hmm. downstairs. I started Cobra Kai season four uh, and I'm done with it now. Mm. I, I, I watched all 10 episodes. That's gross. Well, anyway, that's what I was feeling Wait, this so morning. Wait, so that made you not be able to match your shoes this morning? <laughs> so I was just like, oh, I got to go get this lamp, and I wasn't going to go. What up. time is Cobra Kai on every night? It's It, star- it starts streaming at 8 p.m. Pacific, <laughs> yeah. and they stop the stream at 8 a.m. So uh, that's the only ja- time Japan he could have watched it. Yeah. That's, the, that's the only time. That's right. No, yeah. it's that's what's cool about, you know, they used to make must-see TV on uh-huh. NBC. Now it's um, you can't not see TV because you have uh, an addictive personality. Yeah, and there's everything's closed. Right, well, there's nothing else, nothing else to do. That's pretty crazy. What now? They have what else are you gonna see TV? Because yeah, there's, there's nothing l- else to do. Nothing else to do. I, I overheard people talking today, and they were like, these two women, and one of them said, uh, "I just really get. I love shows that I get addicted to." <laughs> That's- I, I relate to that. I was, yeah, but th- I don't even know what that statement means. Like, I yeah, so you it. love every show you watch? No, I, she's saying I love the feeling I get when I mm. can't stop watching a show and I have to I binge. love alcohol that I get addicted to. <laughs> no, but sometimes with Moshe, I tolerate a show he wants to watch. Well, and like I'm what? not addicted to it. Like what? Like your specials? Yeah, I do. We, li- we watch all my specials. We only watch my specials when we make love because mm-hmm. that's the only way that I can get it going. Is if I have my stand up in the background, I can finally. Sounds truly special. It really is. Actually, honestly, we have had sex to a couple of your specials. Right? You remember that? Remember mm-hmm. th- we did Thick Noon and Good mm-hmm. Guy. Remember that? That, that was okay, great. Okay, wait. I want to go back. Moshe's trying to like d- detract from this like no. mismatched shoes. Okay, situation. listen. I, I actually. I, I want to hear Moshe out here because I don't. I, I actually. I, Moshe has a different style than I have. And I like Moshe's style from Moshe. Thank you. And. <laughs> I'm a well-dressed guy. He there's, cares, no, there's nothing you know? to roast about me. Yeah, but with Nick, wise. you want to dress like him. You're not like, oh, that works for Nick. You're like, I wish I could wear that. But with you, he's like, I like your style for you. I don't <laughs> want to dress like anyone. I want to dress like me. I pick the clothes that I think okay, look good okay, on me. Okay, I hear you. I, I do have a favorite version of Moshe's style, Tell by the me, way. What is it? 
It's when you wear a straight legged, like a khaki jean or something, you know, a like khaki jean, not like a khaki, but a khaki. Oh, you pant. don't remember the 30 pairs of khakis you have folded uh, in your closet. Okay. My, okay by so the way, my styles came over. She said, I've never seen more khaki pants in my life. By the way, I don't yeah. have, oh yeah. <laughs> by the way, I don't have a stylist because I'm capable of dressing myself. <laughs> well, no. oh, I said a- my stylist, but she's really my stylist friend mm-hmm. and she does help me shop, mm-hmm. but she's a friend of ours. She is a friend of and ours. She said she's never, ever in all of her years. She's not, she's not currently a stylist. She's been a stylist though before. Okay, but how did she say this? She was like, "Oh my God, this is amazing. I've never seen this many khakis in my life." Um, it was not like this is amazing. Oh. It was like, "Oh, poor Moshe." Was the undertone? Oh, what? <laughs> poor Moshe. <laughs> wait, wait. Let's get back to your favorite version of me. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's you wearing your like your Danners with yeah, like yeah. with like a straight leg khaki. Um, like over, you know, like folded, but like over, yeah. And then like one of your denim worker jackets. Yeah, that's that was a look for me for a long time. I used to call it the hipster dock worker. Um, and I have been moving. You know, the thing about the hipster dock work, dock worker too is that their ears don't get cold down by the docks because that's why they just cover the top of their head with the beanie. That's exactly right. Yeah. The joke I used to make with the hipster dock worker is. Um, how, well, how did it go? The hipster dock worker look just a old union man, uh, just an old union man unloading uh, down on the dock, unloading pallets of banjos and Lumineers CDs to the people. All right, boys. Uh, all right, boys, take five. I'm gonna go take my uh, my artisan coffee and e-cigarette, e-cigarette break. break. Yeah, yeah, you remember? <laughs> yeah, the good old days. But anyway, I felt I don't you'll take a hit off this e-cig. I don't think that's. I dated myself twice because it was e-cigarette and Lumineers. You would you would go with a different hipster band at this point, wouldn't yeah. you? But I uh, I don't think that industrial uh, dock stuff it's too structured. Especially after those two years of the pandemic. Right now I'm into this like Relaxed soft fit. soft yeah. hippie look, and that's a good look too. Like these pants you have on now are, are nice. They're they're the version of khaki that I said I like on yeah. you. But they're definitely a looser material, and the way that they have the the you know the way that it's cut around the knees, and they have and you have the the cinching kind of there. I like that look. It's a brand called Rogue Territory, and it's my one of my favorite Los Angeles brands. What are your favorite brands? Wait, Nick? hold on. Hold oh, on, so sorry. You on. wanted to ask a question? No, I really want to get to the bottom of my first question because I've dealt oh. with whether or not mis- I should wear the mismatch socks. You're ignoring the important. I'm truly curious if Nick thinks that is okay. Look, because to me that's like a that's like a don't do that. What you're not getting is that when I wear mismatched socks or mismatched shoes, it's not a fashion <laughs> statement. It's a. It's like I'm wearing f- the slippers that I found in in the closet, and I'm running to go do an errand, but and I don't you care might how see I look. Like five people, you know. I'm so unbelievably confident in my style and my fashion. People know me as a well dressed guy. Yes, Nick. I would say they probably rank above me, but I'm like, I would say in the top <laughs> in the rankings that everyone does. I'm right? in the top five percent best dressed male comedians. There's no question about that. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, you I, don't want to go to let, a be seen in, in me, Highland Park with two different shoes. Let on. me rephrase. I'm in the top five percent best dressed white male comedians mm-hmm. now i feel like white male comedians are some of the schlubbiest dressed people maybe in any industry and i'm including like factory workers oh, they're like 62 and wearing a sweatshirt yeah like, it's like, like truly stand-up yeah. male stand-up comedians are the worst dressed people white male just stand-up comedians the worst dressed people in the universe you're the best dressed stand-up comedian i would say in the game that's i will give you that well thank you right and now can he answer yeah oh that's why most you're so good at arguing he gave you a huge compliment and now we're like is this okay <laughs> no but my point is that i'm so i i'm in the top five percent i am in the rarefied air that exists at the top of my you, industry but i definitely feel the, like i can ask nick a question he'll tell me the truth and he knows okay He's like has like take it away fashion wisdom so moshe wearing mismatched socks are you wearing mis- mismatched socks and shoes or just one of one of those? These are two different complaints that she's combined that okay. have a theme. Yeah. They've got a theme. So I think if you're doing like if you're doing mismatched socks and mismatched shoes, I don't like. I do like the idea of how, how plain a van slipper is. So what's nice about that is that you can add socks onto it that I don't necessarily love a lot of patterns like you like, but if you're wearing some simple socks that are like one's gray and one's yellow, I'd be like, "That's that looks really cool." With a pair with of white mixed vans, matched with mismatched shoes. If he just had, the, if he just had like the white vans on now, white vans with one yellow sock, one white sock. Yes, but I do think that the, the one thing that Vans has done is they've sold a, a cheap sneaker that fits well that you can mix. You know, I mean, okay. I th- <laughs> I do feel as if like Converse and Vans have said, "Hey, 
we're going to just do one style so that way you can kind of find your own personality. Nick, will you do me a big favor? <laughs> And will you become the interviewer just for one question? <laughs> and I'm going to feed you the question. Okay, okay. Okay. Will you ask me what type of shoe I was wearing this morning that were mismatched? What type of shoe were you wearing this morning that were mismatched? It was actually Vans slip-ons. Yeah, they were both Vans. So yeah. the, the, those were the ones that you said were okay to mix up. So, Natasha, you're now uh, 0 for 2. Um, I'm not saying that Natasha's 0 for 2, though. I'm not saying that there's a winner or a loser in this situation. I'm saying that... It's unique to Moshe, and Moshe is such a unique personality that that goes with him. You know, like I wouldn't see it. You try like, living with him for eight yeah, years. Yeah, you know, Nick. it's funny. It sounds like somebody that actually appreciates who I am as a man versus my wife. Yeah, who I appreciate as a man. <laughs> um, Nick, uh, we wait. So I should just start appreciating all this. I like that idea. But here, I like that idea more than you. I can guarantee it. Like, I love your personality, honey. You have a great personality. Thank you very much. But you don't like my style? No, it's not your... St it's just like, you know, you're Moshe. Yeah, I know that. Like, uh, like... I'm one of the only. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of the top 5% Moshe's in comedy today. And... But also, you know what the thing is? When you just said, I want to... Appreciating it. That's a nice spin, right? When you take something like... Uh, before you're going to perform on television or something, and you have what you feel is anxiety, Right? And so your mind, you feel different in your body and you say, I'm anxious. Or you say, I'm excited. That's the different, that's how I go on television. So what I think the way that you should go to your husband is saying, move from, I'm, I'm, this I'm, is giving me a feeling, let's just turn it positive. Right. I, move from, I have deep and abiding disdain for you to, and turn it into, I have deep and abiding excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha? I'll try. Hey, okay. uh, Nick, you did just start a fashion uh, Instagram specifically. It's, it's, yeah, a lot of waves. People are... <laughs> it's called it's, it's called Me Teach You Fashion. Me Show, show you, fashion. you Fashion. Me Show You Fashion. And you're going to be teaching comedians who, as we already discussed, are some of the worst dressed people yeah. that known to mankind how to dress better. What are some of the tips for a non-fashion plate person? Out, maybe our listeners. Mm -hmm. What are some of the easy tips on how to look good? If they're trying to date, you know, they haven't given up already. Right. Well, I, I believe classic is the best way to go. You know, again, if somebody has their own style like Moshe, Moshe does sometimes throw classic with his own spin to it. Thank you. However. I think I do too. Um, I think, listen, you don't want to be distracting on stage. Right. Um, which I, for a long time, was D, I was like, tuning down my style mm. in a way for stand up also because I was afraid of other comedians making fun of me because right. that's easy and at the time I was a lot more sensitive I actually have an Instagram account called me show you confidence and yeah. it <laughs> tells you not to care at all what your peers no. think of you Wait, you're Nick, not supposed to when I started comedy I had always worn I had always worn like old vintage dresses and I wanted to dress up for my first time but then I was like I don't want to bomb in like a cute vintage dress <laughs> <laughs> so I wore like jeans and kind of like a slouchy yeah. shirt because it you know but I, I get that well I know a, a well known um, female comedian who one time I saw her upstage at the Laugh Factory and she was like she had these like high black boots on like to her knee and she she had like a really cool like sexy top and she put on Converse and a hooded sweatshirt wow. right before she went on stage and when she came off I was like why did you change from that to that she's like do you think anyone would take me seriously with this on stage well that's actually the the power of natasha wait wait hold on what did she she wore on stage the jeans yeah the jeans the oh i thought it was the opposite that's why i wanted to make sure i understood i was <laughs> i was in the middle of paying you a compliment that's actually the power of your persona that you're such a confident performer that the that the extreme the almost arch nature of your fashion on stage is is the opposite of a distraction. It's like she's digging into her persona. But no, I dress like that anyway, so it's not distracting. No, a to a totally. I'm just saying mm -hmm. this person, that kind of move to change into schlubbier clothes is born of a of a <laughs> of an insecurity that you won't be able to be taken seriously if you're too feminine or if you're too uh, you know attractive on stage. And uh, there's all kinds of patriarchal tentacles in that insecurity. But what I've always thought was really admirable about your persona, and I think it's influenced a, l a lot of younger comedians is that you were saying like fuck what what like the male gaze is talking about i'm gonna dress like a fucking victorian ball gown flapper 
and I'm going to kill. I and always thought that well, was cool. Well, you know cool. what's so funny is I did the opposite is I'll come to a club in my tennis shoes and sweatpants yeah, and, and then just hang my dress on. there yeah. and put it on just because I will walk to the show sometimes and I don't want to well, walk are, in heels. Clothes and comedy are interesting. I don't, I won't perform in short sleeves because I feel insecure. Because uh, you have those hairy arms. I have hairy arms and I just feel like it's too casual. I just don't want to. I didn't used to like, I never liked dancing with short sleeves either. I, I thought that I liked, I, I looked better my dancing looked better with longer sleeves. How often did you watch videos of yourself dancing? It's just uh, how I don't watch videos of myself doing stand up either. I just felt uh, less confident. Like so, we're saying maybe three, four times a day, though. Yeah, yeah three yeah. or four times. When when I when I make love to Natasha <laughs> and I stop my special and then I stop <laughs> your <motion>. special. <laughs> because <laughs> that's the kind of music you would dance to a lot too, right? By the way, we should have a dance party. But here's a here's a a thought. So Eddie Izzard, right? Like that that. His stand-up special probably influenced me the most. Sure, Dress, dress to Kill. kill. It yeah. just changed me, you know? And he's wearing a dress on stage. He's wearing a dress and makeup, and that audience is taking him very serious. Mm. And it's beautiful because he's saying, I'm so fucking interesting that this won't distract you from that. Right. I'm actually just going to do my thing. And that's what I, I like. I really looked at that and I was like, I want to have that on stage. I want to be able to dress how I like, which makes me feel the most special and the most like, Hey, I'm actually not an audience member. I'm the guy you came to see. So right. that's why I've got fucking fingernail that, polish on and I'm wearing weird. So, you know, like that's how I've always felt too. There's this idea in, in stand up, I think with a lot of stand ups that you're supposed to be so austere and deconstructed that, that all that matters is the jokes, and I've never felt that way. I feel like the sh it's a show. It's a sh all it's show that matters business. is the live performance for them that night. Yeah. is the only time they're seeing you. That's it. Yeah, that year probably. You know, especially if you're on tour. And like, I remember seeing like, I don't know. I'm not going to say the musician, but like a musician when I was younger, and he had on like red shoes on stage and I wanted red shoes after mm -hmm. that. I never had mm -hmm. red shoes, but I was just like, that's so cool. That's like, so cool. By the way, he chose to wear those tonight at the night that I saw him, you know, like that meant something. To it's kind of yeah, cool. He probably had him in his dressing room and he put them on every night when he got on. stage. <laughs> sure. I, I think it's cool that you didn't mention who it was. Cause it's like, you don't want to throw a musician under the bus. Like I don't know. I don't want to make myself look like a dork. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Hootie man. For the musician Hootie, had these red, Hootie had the red <laughs> shoes. Wait, I remember reading a quote when I started comedy and it said, if you dress like the audience, you become one of them. Oh, I love that. And so I mm. always had that in my head, and I was always like wanting to, Same. wanting to um, dominate an audience. But you by know, my like clothes. visually dominate them. I think that's really great. <laughs> like Mitch Hedberg, for instance. You know, like but he, he had, had a look. very simple dressing. You know, he dressed simple, but he wore glasses or something. You know, like something that was just like we're different. Just so you guys know, totally. But it's, I'm also approachable. But like Nate Bargetsy, who. I took out and just dressed for this Me Show You Fashion show that I'm going to be doing. He, like, he he has wives of his fans message him, what what's that shirt you're wearing? I want to get it for my husband. You know, like, he wants to wear something that his audience says, I can wear that. I can afford that and I can wear it. Yeah. So he's like, the it's made by um, Title Test Golf Clubs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, he does like to wear a lot of golf stuff on stage. <laughs> is that what did I say the company right? Yeah. Is it Title Test? Ti title -ist? Titleist. Titleist. I, I, I came knew close. A, I knew a girl who was in an obscure Swedish girl band, but she said it really dawned on her when they started performing, and she was like one of five that was cast in this band, like in the whole, mm -hmm. you know, craze of girl bands. And she said she would look out in the audience, and like all these young kids had her hairstyle because she was the one with the bun. And then, like, every kid, like, wears, you know, like, they kind of pick the one that they like. But, you know, it's just as a performer. Just say the Swedish group. I don't remember. It was like. <laughs> They're called the Red Shoe Girls. And I think you maybe saw them early in your career. They weren't that famous. But they were famous for a minute. And they had a hit. And so, anyway. Here's my uh, fashion advice. For, this is my least favorite kind of fashion. Okay. here, uh, Nick. You'll, you'll probably get better advice than me because you've been thinking about this more. What I hate the most, I don't think you can buy style. And my least favorite look is not a person that doesn't... Okay, my least favorite look of all is person that tries nothing, right? But, you know, just person that looks Isn't like... Isn't that normcore? 
No, because at least those people are trying something. They're I don't trying to, but they're 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 using the person who does nothing as an inspiration. No, no, that's but right. the, Normcore is actually somebody saying I have a style. Yeah, and they're exactly. doing the style. Like he, of he's, course, but I like that their inspiration is nothing. <laughs> it is true that the that the <laughs> it's the separate, nothing. The separation between <laughs> unbelievably poorly dressed young person and unbelievably hiply dressed po- uh, young person is indistinguishable at this point. Where it used to be much more like people were in black and the only. The way you know now is if the young person pulls their lip down and they have a lip tattoo that says, I'm doing this ironically. And you're like, oh, you're cool. You know, that's how you know. I mean, the way that I know is stitching. I can tell by the stitching of someone's clothes. Oh, you snob. I, I could just tell if it's <laughs> good stitching. or not. Stitching is like the one thing that, that cheaper clothes kind of. But you norm- look at people stitching? I don't look at it. I see it. I just see it when I'm walking. When I see somebody's outfit and I see their jacket, I see how it's stitched. I'm like, that's either. That's, can you tell on Zara dresses? That's Old it? Navy or that's. Right. Product. Newer Navy. Yeah. Yeah, the actual Navy. No, but Normcore people don't, they don't, some of them do. When you get into the higher end actual like fashion type of people, sure, they're using, they're wearing designer stuff. But most of these young people that that's their style, they buy, they're all buying vintage from the 90s and they all look shape like shapeless uh, misanthropes. And it's mm-hmm. not my favorite style. I actually think it's, in fact, I really dislike it, but I respect that it's a thing. They're actually doing a thing. But my least favorite look, beyond beside like I'm and then not... I think we need to move on because I, this is very specific. Sure. Okay, let's move on. Maybe we'll move on in the middle of my thought. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would love to talk to you <laughs> we're talking, about We've been talking th- about fashion for 40 minutes and all of a sudden I'm like, well, I've got a thought. You're like, okay, okay. maybe we should move on. <laughs> okay. No, you're talking about your second least favorite look from the community. Well, my second least favorite thing you've ever said to me on the podcast is what just happened just then. <laughs> my, I hate when somebody looks like they went into like a, a Nordstrom with with a with a platinum credit card and just bought every name brand they could get yeah. their hands on. So a, a Gucci top and a Versace pant and a, it's just look. It's like they're trying to throw money at their lack of creative. That is style. like a vibe though right now too. Is people wearing like Nike shoes, Adidas socks. Like to mix all those brands like that are hip? like that are yeah that are like similar brands at whatever the it's sportswear or if it's like high end wear to wear like you know it's but I agree I I the only time that I appreciate somebody wearing Gucci is I was talking to, to you guys about this the other day is if it's vintage knockoff it has fake to be Gucci. like fake Gucci Fucci. from the eighties they call that Fucci or Doctor Anthony Fucci yeah Doctor Anthony Fucci. <laughs> Wait, but I have I have an Gucci. issue right now. You do? Now. Maybe we can move on. Let's no. go to a new topic. <laughs> My issue's current. Okay, go ahead. Well, with the pandemic, I have like a Can 9-5 mask obscuring three quarters of my face every time I'm talking to anyone. So I'm like, I don't fucking care what I'm wearing. So maybe it's okay to wear the two different shoes. And like, you know, it's like I don't really want to get dressed up ever when I go out because I... Sorry, my child's screaming. <laughs> I don't want to go. I, I, tell, talk me through that. How do we? How do you go with this? Do I need to get cuter well, masks? How do you I, find <laughs> the motivation to look as stylish as you have been looking lately? When most of your face is obscured when you're yeah, talking to people. I, I mean, I have a brand of masks that I go with that I... You think look cool. They look better than everyone else's. I what are that. they? They're called uh, Nike 9.5. <laughs> I'll tell you off the air because I don't want them selling out because it, it's oh, not okay. it's a that, small batch. It's, I have a small face. I need kids' masks that won't work. I've tagged it on my fashion thing. So and by the way, that up. you do have a small face, and it's uh, honestly the, the most attractive part of you. I love how small your face is. It's one of the reasons I'm with you today. <laughs> I'm like she's got the smallest face. I always said she's the most elegantly dressed mm-hmm. lady in the comedy game, and and has the smallest face. Okay, so how do we give a fuck? I well, I I match them to my outfits. I mean, I'm you know you match your masks. Yeah, because I care how I look <laughs> and I'm not just going to like walk around like I'm wearing I'm not just going to wear a white or a blue mask. Really? Yeah. What about N95 though? Doesn't that throw everything into a tizzy? You can't wear these like cool cloth masks because you're going to just get Omicron, co- dude. You got to like mask uh, up. Let's move on from COVID talk. Yeah, I I, but I I do think though. I mean, I like I, I'm gonna sp- spend money on my haircut. At the beginning of this, I was like wearing the same mask that everyone had. Then I was like, I think this might go on for a while. Why don't I? <laughs> mm. Why don't I actually get something that I don't think throws off my whole outfit? Mm-hmm. You know what? I like that because I do have this one black KN95 or 
N95 kids mask, mm -hmm. but it has a cool shape. I should just get a bunch of those because yeah, it looks those are good. good. On I, me. I know it's which small. one you're talking about. It looks kind of almost like a veil <laughs> or there's, something. There's right wing people listening into this podcast right now. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. They're talking about matching their masks <laughs> to make themselves look no, better. But it's a valid point because it's it's like no, this new right. feeling I have when I go out in public. I'm like, no one knows. People just see my eyes. I'm in a I'm I'm in a hurry. It I'm so much better at reading eyes now. I mean, yeah. you know, like I can really just look, you can just see everything. Um, I uh, want to know more what you think for our listeners, how they can qu go from being oh, yeah. zeros to heroes fashion wise. What You're do, in the dating scene. What's the mm -hmm. first thing? Mask what, matching is not bad. When you say classic, what do you mean? Like, where do you go? What's a place to start? Something like, okay, okay. If you go out and you buy a pant, let's say you go buy a J. Crew pant, okay? Mm -hmm. I call them pants. Do you buy them one at a time? I the, try the, to. The legs. The yeah. uh, the le and then you mix and match like okay. if they're made by yes. Vans. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, let's call them trousers. Okay. Sure. So you go buy a pair of J. Crew trousers. Mm -hmm. um, those are fit for everyone. Right. Those are fit for the most basic form, which not everyone has. Mm -hmm. Right. So anytime I buy something, unless, you know, I take it and get it fitted, it takes a day and it costs $13. And it makes me want to. Where do you take it though? A cleaners? Yeah, like Silver Glen cleaners around the corner or wherever. You know. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We don't give. We don't even no. live in L.A. But do you have to? But do you have to sit there with them? Like, how do you just take it in? You know. No, what I, mean? I just take it in. I already know what I'm going to say. I, I, every pair of pants that I let's get. Let's do it. Let's do a role play. Okay, I'll <laughs> be the tailor. Okay. Okay. Hi. When the moon hits your eye, like it a big bit. Hey, Nicholas, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> How are you, my friend? <laughs> Geppetto, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Have you met my son, Pinocchio? <laughs> I know your son. Yes, yeah. he was Puppet. <laughs> well, he's here all the time. Yes, I love not Puppet. Sure what the child laws are as far as you have. Anything him in is here. legal with Puppet. <laughs> okay. How can I help you? I, um, listen, I got a new pair of pants. Oh, and they're right here. I love it. I love it. <laughs> if you could take um, the inseam from the knee down. In three quarters of an inch. Pinocchio, Pinocchio, <laughs> grab the shears, grab the needle. So you already know how much. I mean, that's so you, you can't just like tell listeners to say that. They have to kind of learn how much, like do a test. No, well, a I good think tailor. that's a standard. If you go in and get a pair of J. Really? Crew pants, that's if you great want, to know. if the if the bottom's wide, I just take it. For, and you go from the knee down. It's very subtle. You can't tell. Three quarters of an inch. And you they, just you shrink the aperture of the pant leg a little yeah. bit. And you're paying That's thirteen dollars. Cool. The pants were only forty instead of paying three hundred dollars yeah. at like a really expensive. Also, place. you know, you you. If also, you, J. Crew's expensive, by the way. I also know like how long I want my pants, but you know, you can go and I mean, there's also different types of lengths that I, I want to fold them or I don't, or I want them to hit my shoe at a certain way, or I want them that's to be a up really, in my socks. You know, that's a really cool bit of advice, actually. If you buy pants, to take them to a tailor, and probably a tailor could help you figure out the way you want the, the best look for your pants to make it fit you better. That's a really good piece of advice. Also, actually. here's this. You buy something because you just love the color. You mm -hmm. you know you got trapped. You loved it. You the color you like, and then you get home and you 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 like. I'm gonna wear this today. You put it on. Ah, it's not right. Take it off. You, and you just never get around to actually wearing it because the look isn't right. Take that in. Thirteen bucks, twenty bucks. That's so smart. And they'll be like, because you know, why don't you like it? Well, because the bottom's too tight. Okay, great. Let's take the elastic out of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't like it because the. There's too much here. Okay, great. We'll actually cut into your armpits. Sounds and like we're you have a great that. tailor. No, but he's it's got a that, tailor. It, but it's not that easy to always. No, tell, you, it's not like people are like full of solutions. You can go to any tailor. I've done this in and multiple. You by cities. the way, I've done, done it too. Ann, Ann Taylor. Short. You could go to Elizabeth Taylor. Any one of them will help you out. The problem, the only problem I had with the tailor is taking it in, in uh, Canada, and they were like, "What? What?" And I'm like three quarters of an inch, and they're like, "We don't." I'm like, well, but, well, okay. They're like, we dress like shit here. Our shoes, but it was like it was in Montreal, uh, and it was just it everything sucked. sucked. They don't dress like shit in Montreal. They're, they're well Montreal dressed. is particularly fast. Canada, though, I Canada think is not. But Montreal come on, I don't. Is. I disagree. I think Canadians look I'm good. I'm sure people in Toronto know how to dress. Can it, but can, they, but yeah. they can never wear some cool shoes because they're Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, obviously, some great fashion. Uh, can I say this quickly? A uh, one bit of advice I have for the people out there that if you suffer from the same ailment I do, which is like two big dick syndrome, the drop crotch pants. Two are, of them? Yes, <laughs> I have two big dicks. I keep them in on the mantle, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I put when I put my drop crotch pants in, I take both of my the, yeah. the, the the dicks that I bought on the on the black market. 
uh, for voodoo ceremonies and I put them in the drop crotch. That's nice. It is really nice. Well, by the way, Nick, I second what you say. I think it's really cool that you actually make the effort to do it. That's really awesome. Well, and, it makes and I you know it's feel true. better. Because I, I used to, I've worked for designers before and it's always like it's all about how things fit you. And it makes it it makes you feel better. It also takes something that everybody can have and it makes it a little bit of your own. So you know that yours is like you cared about it. I don't know. And I, it gives you more confidence when you're walking around because you're like, I made this look good on me. I totally agree. Agree, and I don't think that fashion is for elite people or for rich people. I think that there's a there's a way to make yourself look good at any price point that you have in any budget, and it's all about trying. The prob the worst look is uh, is trying too hard. The second worst look is not trying at all. I think that's what I was trying to say earlier. And I I I, I have one other thought now that we've got into this, but it's about how you wear your clothes. You know, I own a good amount of suits and I decided a while back I'm going to wear suits on a Tuesday. I just want to wear a suit, but I'm Is not going to an office. Yeah. Cause you make, you get suits that are comfortable. You have them uh. fitted, right? They're comfortable. Right. But I'll get on my knee in dirt in a suit. Okay, that I, it's you're I'm wearing. Me. What I'm wearing is I'm wearing it. And if there's a That's stain cool. that came from the time I played soccer with my son, that's what that stain is. You it's play a little, soccer with your son in not, a suit? I mean, that was hypothetical. <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to yeah, picture no, it. I was playing basketball with him in a suit not too long ago. Let's do actually... A bit well, comfortable. Let's, let's do a bit of role play, okay? We're on the court, okay? And and you're in a suit, and, I, and I'm one of the ballers on the court, okay? Mm-hmm. Kush, 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 kush. Hey, hey, Nicholas, it's me, the Taylor, the basketball playing Taylor. Hey, you meet my boy, Geppetto, Pinocchio. Yeah, yes, yeah, me. Him, you bring him everywhere. Huh? I love basketball mm-hmm. almost as much as I love sewing. Listen, I'm not a professional basketball player, Geppetto. <laughs> I am here because my son's learning how to shoot, and I'm not going to change the way I look. And you, and you look like a professional and a basketball player. <laughs> um, should uh, we do so some advice? I'm, yeah, but just to, just to, just to cap, up, like cap it, I just want to say recap. Yeah, recap, cap, cap it up. Mm-hmm. Um, I totally agree. Classics. And, and also, like, you don't want to be – you want to have, like – you want to be able to keep the same clothes for five years. You know, mm-hmm. you want things – Yes. To not be vict- fashion, whatever was in fashion. And Disposable one, and fashion. And things that look good on you. One other quick tip is traveling. I feel like when people travel, they think, oh, what's going to be comfortable? What are things that I never wear? <laughs> and people tend to pack stuff that they don't wear at home because mm-hmm. they think they're in a ho- they're traveling and they got to have comfortable shoes. It's right. like you b- bring what you wore yesterday. Like dress how you dress at home. Mm-hmm. Travel with that. Don't bring special shoes because you're walking. <laughs> Bring the right. boots that you like. You gave me great advice. I was going to Atlanta and I was going to be quarantined for three weeks. And I and he's like, just w- w- bring a bunch of black things. Mm. And that was totally great because then I just had black clothes and the people, the few people I did see didn't know it was the same clothes because yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting in a hotel room by myself, you know, and. Well, that's what I was going to say. Disposable fashion is actually more expensive in a way because you wash it once and it gets destroyed. And there's no it's, room for it sometimes all. Sometimes it's good to get one really nice coat yes. that you yeah. can wear a lot you, and it can become part of your look. Our kid it, has 9,000. Or like in my case, 1,000 coats. 1,000 yeah. beautiful coats. Um, n- Nick, but we we are not a fashion podcast, but yes. tonight we are, which I've enjoyed. We are a... a, 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 a advice podcast well let's say this though follow me sh- at me show you fashion and on, you can get advice about fashion on instagram people yeah. can cu- people can dm you and get totally okay, actually like they should send you pictures and you post it and you give them little tips and, th- and things like that in your that. stories yeah. that's a cool idea that's a great idea because it's uh, getting towards the end of the year, we got a bunch of backlogged. Uh, we often have callers call in, but instead, of what we're doing today is some of the backlog emails and text questions that we've gotten from some of our listeners, and maybe you can help us answer some of those. Yeah, I've been on the show. I, I know what you guys do, but so. this is something different, which okay. is why I'm a explaining fan it. Of what we do, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm yeah. a big fan. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> I know Anna Kendrick's listening. She's a fan. Anna, hey, we would love to have you on the show. I mean, actually, we would love to have you on the show right now if you could come by. Okay. <laughs> Um, Because we'll forget next week to ask you. Oh, this is a good one for you, actually, Nick. What's the worst parenting advice you received from someone? Can you think of anything? What about you, Natasha? What do you guys think? I I thought um, it's it's when you're about to have the kid and people say something to the tune of, make sure and get out and watch as many movies as you can, you know? And and it's like, okay, so you thought, what, you thought I was going to try and be a good parent? Like, I'm just going to keep my movie schedule. But... The real advice for me would have been, hey, get ready to meet a shitload of adults that you're uh, going to have nothing in common with, except <laughs> that you fucked, you like fucked roughly around the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you're just like, oh, hey, Mark, 
January 2012. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, Nicholas, it's a Peach and Paddle, January yeah. 2012. Me and you, right? Very we cool. I love to have sex. <laughs> we wrote that out. We wrote it out all the way. Yes, we I, I make love to a block of wood and out come my just, little son, just Pinocchio. Just a little extra warmth, huh? My, my worst advice is everyone told me to breastfeed because it would be very bonding. Mm. And I felt it was like very in, uh, just very inconvenient and... The pumping was like a nightmare and I could never figure it out exactly. And I just kind of hated the whole thing. And it, I just didn't feel like it was any more bonding than like changing a diarrhea diaper. <laughs> 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 Which is more bonding with your husband or your, your partner. I mean, how do the is. men bond? They don't have to like have their tit, their teeth depleted. That's why at that age, it's mostly the women are bonding with it. You know, there's not right. much the man can do except let the woman do everything and just kind of go hang out with his buds. Yeah, for four, oh, to, to, four, four to seven years. Yeah. Did. <laughs> <laughs> when did we stop doing that, by the way? <laughs> You've got an eight-year-old, is yeah, that right? I, I, I was, I promised around 12 or 13. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. That, then you really start then bonding. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to be a big bonder. I'm going to teach him karate, which yeah. I learned last uh -huh. night watching Cobra Kai. The worst advice I received um, was a lot of people told us that we should get a night nurse in the, oh, that was bad. the first, like immediately. People were like, take out a loan. Yeah, they were like, no matter the cost, do it. And we did hire... Night nurses are more expensive than regular nannies because they work in the middle of the night. So they kind of start at like $40, 30 40 an hour. I know we're losing some of our listeners right now <laughs> with the elitism of this conversation. But the truth is we hired this person. We could not afford it. We still did it. We hired and this and person. she's a night nurse, so she's a little more sexual. and Yes, like um, like sexual. that song, the, the night nurse. Night nurse. Who's that? It doesn't matter. On the Night Nurse. No, no. There's a no, song no. called Night Nurse by the guy that did the heart of the... Jimmy Cliff. Mm -hmm. I think it was who... Yeah, it was Jimmy Jiminy Cliff. Jiminy Cliff. Jiminy... Hey, you know Jiminy Cliff is? <laughs> Cliff if? Okay. So uh, we come home. First of all, the when you have a child, the first week, the first days when you get home from the hospital are the most vulnerable I've ever felt as an adult, the first like th two to three weeks of parenting is like, I've never felt weaker and more impotent as an adult with my confidence in the world than that time. Cause I just, you know, the primary thing you think, uh, I'm sure you both relate to this is like the hospital gives you the baby and then you just leave the hospital. I remember the parking garage, like we were in the car and I was like, so they're just going to let us go. Yeah. You just like, wait, we don't know what, what do you they do? Were like making sure that someone had a car seat. I was, hoping, yeah. I was hoping that it was like when you get a rental car, you know, you get in the car and then you drive out and there's one, one guy. more guy. I was there's like one more person that's like, hey, you guys, uh, you guys sure you can handle this? One more nurse to just be like, okay, wait, wait, wait. We're not really letting you go. Go back to the hospital and spend another day yeah, there. Yeah, you got to go back, sir. But no. Yeah, it, and then remember we were in the elevator and someone was like, what's her name? And, and we were, didn't we even said, know. We didn't know the name. And then we just kind of were like said the name we thought and just both gave Was it the actual name that it ended yeah, up being? Yeah, and you like gave, your, gave a look like I hate this. Uh, what, mm. the name? You just were like, this doesn't feel right. That's cemented in her head. No, I love my child's <laughs> name. What? That's crazy. You think wow. I said? I love or you my just child's name. Stressed about it. I I love little Esmeralda, Moshashino, uh, <laughs> Marachino, Geppetto, Pinocchio, Natasha yeah. Legerio the third. But um, but, I love that we gave her a name that was very similar to my last name, but not quite. But then we drove home, and we're in this state of vulnerability, you know. And like you right. said, they used to have a village. You know, okay, yeah, they used to go home by yourself, but you live next door to like your neighbor and your aunt and your grandma and your great grandma, and they were all in the same village. But now you're just in this big urban sprawl, and you're just alone. And then we walk into the in in, and I know it almost seems like I'm saying the opposite, but we walk into our house and there's a fucking stranger who we've who we've hired because a friend hired her. And this and, isn't one of those Craigslist ones that you guys have done. This is more no our dude, for the kids, dude, our our um obstetrician said the way that he found his night nurse and nanny for his child was he put an ad out on Craigslist. It was just like... On back pages? On back page. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a hot BBW. <laughs> anyway, to me, having a stranger in my house, the moment... We only I, had her for one day, but we still paid her for three weeks. The moment I walked in was so disturbed. I just hated it. And then I walked out. She and was mean, too. I came back to come into my child's room, and mm. I knocked on the door. Because I was so uncomfortable. And the woman goes, you don't need to knock on the door. And so then I didn't walk. Yeah, but knock what if she was like, you don't need to knock on the door? Yeah, what do you think? She was in there with her tits out? <laughs> <laughs> then I walked out 
and I, taking her advice, I came in and she, uh, I didn't knock on the door and she was standing in pitch black, standing over the child's crib, staring at it. And I was like, we need to get this person out of our lives. So I would say, don't, mm-hmm. I would say, give yourself a few weeks to experience the rhythm of life with this little creature and call for help. Don't prearrange it. That's what I think. Yeah. All right. Should we do another? Yeah. Um, Okay. Here's a good one. How to deal with the only hot dude in town wanting to date your friend and not you. (laughs) I mean, what, what can you do? It's very simple. What you do. What? Kill your friend. Move to a bigger <laughs> town oh. where there's not one hot guy. I mean, what? How fucking yeah, I would small? Never, I would have never killed my friend. I, I would have moved. <laughs> how fucking small is this town where they're just like, yeah, Chad? He's the only fuckable dude in town. It's like, uh, move to an urban area. There's lots of good-looking people. Okay, I have a good one. Here's this. This might actually be helpful. You guys might have some scope on this. Okay. Is it normal to be 25 and still not have an idea of what I'm supposed to be doing in life? Mm, that's a great question. I don't think there's anything abnormal about about that. That's probably I don't know. I don't. I know started what I'm doing. stand up at 26. I think that it's not that it's abnormal. It means that you're stunted, fucked up, and probably going to fail in the rest of your life, right? Oh. I mean, no, isn't 25 actually about the time? But what if you, it's 35? Yeah. Well, yeah, no, there aren't any actual hard and fast rules. But isn't 25 the kind of typical time where you start shaking away mm-hmm. the sediment that was all of the different things you thought you might be interested in? And you start honing a little bit more in on what you're going to become. I think it's good to be 25 and be like this because... People that make decisions at 18, 19, this is what I'm going to do. Right. I'm going to do this. Then they just end up doing it and they, they don't like it. It's boring. And and you're actually holding out saying like, okay, I'm not just going to take whatever is easy right now at Costco. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I mean, Costco is great, actually. Didn't work there. I, I'm, but I'm, I'm actually kind of a firm believer you guys might not agree with this, but I think college is amazing because college really college is good if you can do you, it. You makes you read and take in things that you wouldn't normally take in, and it actually shapes you and influences you in ways that you could. Right now, we're in this very like self directed mode. Like all, all we watch or do is we control. Mm-hmm. There's something nice about not being in control of everything that's going on around you and in control of your environment. That's why I sometimes like to go right at like a Starbucks or somewhere where I don't control every every bit of the environment. The, the other thing I was thinking about this timeline thing is don't fall victim. In AA, they used to say compare and despair. Don't fall in victim to the idea that your timeline is... Univer- that there's a universal timeline. When you're 25 and you start going, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life, it's usually because you're looking around at other people that are 25 and they seem like they do know what they want to do with their life and you're going, I'm not on the right track. But everybody's timeline is slightly different. And it's not possible that you'll become a listless loser and you won't notice. You will know when you are too old to not have anything interesting you or drawing you. And 25, I think, is not the age to start throwing your hands up and saying, what am I doing like with Rodney myself? Dainfield, Rodney Dangerfield. Like he was a plumber or whatever totally. until he was 35. And then he's like, I'm going to try was comedy. Was he really? Yeah. The thing is, though, do you like? did you like him? Because I always yeah. heard that nobody in comedy respected him. I get that. Even yeah. though... Oh, yeah, I already got Moshe's no, trying to set you up. I already got no respect. <laughs> Are you guys, this has been a lot of fun, huh? Should we do another question? <laughs> let's do one more. Do we have secrets? Okay, let's do one more, and then I want to hear some secrets, Moshe. Um, okay. How hard... Uh, let's see. How hard is it going to be to quit smoking? What were the couple of weeks like after quitting? You've quit smoking, Nick. What do you think? It's very difficult. Mm. I, I, I'd say getting sick is the best way to do it. Mm. What do you mean? Like get something where you're so sick you don't want to smoke so that you get through the physical addiction and it's just part of your cold or whatever it is that you have. Oh, COVID. Yeah. So this if you is get the perfect COVID, time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually. That's how I quit was I got sick and I just didn't want to smoke. Here's what I did to quit. I went from cigarettes. Ooh, I love a cigarette right now. I went Does from anyone c- have one? I went, no, we don't. You guys just have those gross pouches you put in your Wait, lips. You're, you're, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I went from smoking to e-cigarettes to nicotine gum to nicotine toothpicks yeah. to nic- uh, tobacco-free nicotine pouches. And I think we're all glad those toothpicks are gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I hated the gum because I thought I hated the gum, but then the toothpicks came along. Oh, oh well, here's what happened between the toothpicks 
and the pat the thing you're on now, which is the little thing that goes inside your mm -hmm. uh, gum. He my, did, anal, my anal cavity. He did. <laughs> he did um, little inches of the toothpick. Yeah, he would just cut them up. I remember that. <laughs> so that was like, you guys, that was the worst one because there'd be these little sprouted wooden <laughs> things everywhere. <laughs> no, because I, I was just saying, then I started missing the gum. I was like, maybe, honey, you should start chewing that gum again. Let's do some but, more advice. No, but, but these people need help. So do you guys think, do you feel better on these little pouches in your lips than you yeah, do? Yeah, but the way to quit smoking is, the, to me, you have to look at all of the negatives, which it's hard to see until you're out of it. But I think negatives are the way that you're perceived by other people. It's not good. Like cool and older, right? <clears throat> you think that at the time while From you're smoking. smoking. You are perceived pretty bad smoking unless you're in like at your own house with but friends who are smoking. But also like you are deciding at events with friends to take constant breaks from your friends. You're like... And but you're what if allowed you have, like, that. Cool smoking buddies. I know that's when you go out. And then the cool smoking buddies hang out. And then the people inside are like, "Why are they hanging out with that? Like, this is so it's like weird." Like doing like smoking pot or something. It eventually, though, it just it's not a good look. I don't think. And I realize that I I hated always trying to leave, but I always was looking forward to leaving. You know, it but stinks. It does. It does. The stink. smell is ridiculous. For and sure, it, it hurts your throat. And you don't realize how ridiculous the smell is while you're doing it. If, by the oh, way, if you're I just know. tuning into the podcast, we're talking about oral sex. Um, <laughs> Okay, let's ask another couple of these questions, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think fine. these are good. Um, yes, there are some fun ones. By the uh, way, I loved smoking. I was a big smoker. Oh, smoking was fun. Smoking was fun. What if we all just smoke one a day, you guys? No. No way. Why? I can't do it because I'm not that type of guy. Yeah. I'm not that type of guy. Man. Yeah, he'd be fucking that cigarette. Mm-hmm. That's right. Like, I would be fucking that cigarette like Geppetto fucked that you block of wood. You can't just do one. Uh, yeah, no. no. I'll eventually creep up and I'll do start doing it regularly. Yeah. Uh, we have a one month old. Should I, let, should I do a Craigslist personal? <laughs> Looking for someone Looking to for smoke a smoking one buddy? cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea. Um, uh, how about a hetero couple wanting help on non sexist engagement slash wedding proposals? Do we both propose? <clears throat> I don't. I I feel like we're all like cis het normies. But is is it is I don't it know how it is goes. it sexist for a. Uh, a male partner to propose to the female. I guess it is for it to be the de facto position that the male always does. For it to be expected, does. for it to be... It um, would be weird if the woman does it. That's the sexist part, right? I have an idea. Hire like a, uh, like a clown or a street performer to do it for both of you. To come up and get on both knees and say, do you, Nick, take uh, Natasha... Would you guys like to get married? Maybe they need to have a talk about it. I mean, it sounds like they already know they're going to get married. <laughs> well, so that's not clear. Uh huh. Why you know, isn't it clear? Well, I think the first part, which I've said before on this podcast, is like making sure that your partner, wh whoever you think is supposed to do the asking, knows that if they ask you, you won't reject them. So if you can kind of let someone know you're not going to reject them if they mm. ask, they're going to have way more boldness. But that's not the question they're asking. They're saying, how do we do a proposal that doesn't feel like it's conforming to gender expectations? The man does it to the I woman. I see. So they're already talking about it. So maybe they want to decide together. I know what you mean. That I feel like we need to have someone else on to ask. I wonder how many marriages like happened just because the woman didn't know how to say no. I'm sure plenty. I'm sure that's Hello? happened a lot. Because, I mean, it's hey, hard wait to reject a, a guy. Come on. You put it on my, 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 the, 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 the pointer finger. No, I didn't. Yes, did I really? Did. Why did I do that? Because you, because of John Travolta. Ah, uh, that's right. And I had to I keep telling just... Moshe, I was like, if you get me a ring and here's the person I like who designs rings. And if you do that, I will say yes. I remember yeah. I told you that. See, honey? Ed Hardy, by the way, was the designer. <laughs> See, that's nice that you did it that way though, because... That and then the, he was like, the Ooh. thought of like a man just out of nowhere doing it. And the woman's like, I, uh, that you doesn't guess. happen. That feels like it barely happened. And you also didn't kneel. You didn't know that that was part of it. Honey, was there anything you liked about getting <laughs> engaged to me? <laughs> I mean, no, he just said that's the most traditional way, but I don't think that's, you know, I think, okay. What's so another thing. What's a way that doesn't have any gender expectations in it? Somebody's got to make the decision. Is I that mean, true? Why? Well, someone has to do it. Or you could skip becoming engaged and just so have a why? conversation. Why even get married? Why get married? Yeah. I'm asking myself that every podcast. That, that should be the name of this podcast. But no, I'm serious, I though. Think that's already some ask you that. Ask yourself that question, though, beforehand, because... No, I'm not saying don't get married. I'm saying like you really need to understand marriage and the uh, the thing you're getting into is hard to get out of. It's not like an easy thing. Sure. And 
you're in a place right now where you can just hop out of something. Like there's no 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 bummer. You, someone will be sad for a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, not? I'm just saying this is like a window into everybody here's psyche. It's like all they're saying is, how do I do a proposal that isn't laden with gender <laughs> expectations? And you're like, why bother getting married? And the is like, the truth is sometimes proposals suck. You know, the person puts it on your spring thing. It's like all they're saying is, how do we get engaged where the guy doesn't get down on one knee? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Have them, you know. I, I like the idea of I them both spontaneously deciding it, but it's so ingrained as, a, maybe as you, that. Maybe you it's can hard. each do it. You know, maybe you do one and the other. I don't know. I mean, it's like also I never put a, a huge importance on a proposal or a wedding. You know, like I'm not like I need to have six women dressed in this same matching outfit. Like I would never put my friends through that. What if you said something like, "Hey, listen, we're gonna go out on Thursday night. I want to marry you." Do you want me to ask you on Thursday at dinner? <laughs> or That's so romantic, Nick. I like that. <laughs> uh, you know what I would do? Here's what I would Oh, wait. Can I just say one more thing about our proposal? It was so cute. And I loved our proposal. Right. We were in New you Orleans. You just have a lot of negative memories. No, it was so it. cute. We were in New Orleans. <laughs> and Moshe took me to this restaurant we love. Um, is it Louise's? What's it called? Oh, shit. What is it called? I don't remember. Anyway, we're at this restaurant, and he kept like wanting to change tables to get the perfect table. And I was like, why does Moshe want to keep changing tape Irene's? So we're at this place called Irene's and it's like really Mm -hmm. fancy and like old school. And it's like, you know, there's wallpaper and all these little tables. And he like moved us three times. And I was like, he's going to like pull out a ring. But you forgot it. And then like. Did I really? Yeah. And then we went back to the hotel. This is one of her memories. (laughs) Fond memories. It's another critique. (laughs) No, I think it's cute that you forgot it. No, it's all part of the. It's like getting dirt on your suit. It's it's the way that it goes. (laughs) (laughs) It's not. No experience is. No experience. No outfit is ruined. It's just altered by life. So then we went back to the hotel and we went on a walk. And then we went to like the edge of the Mississippi River. And then you like. We're, we were kissing, and then you put it on my pointer finger. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen, I got a real bit of uh, uh, advice for the people asking for a non-sexist mm-hmm. way. I think what you do is on your anniversary or some date that's special to you, you guys have a conversation. Uh, what you What you are going to have to sacrifice is the, like, spontaneous surprise part. But you guys have a conversation and pick a date. Say, okay, our, our, our anniversary is October the 12th, and so let's – both propose to each other in whatever way feels nice. You can do a ceremony, I'll do a ceremony, and we will have it happen. We will both do a proposal offering and make your own traditions. I think that's that's the way. Like, I made my yeah. own tradition. I was like, a lot of people put the ring on the ring finger, but that feels so basic. Yeah. I'm going to put it on the pointer finger because I want your finger to always be pointing at my heart. And then the other three are pointing back at you. That's right. Whenever you put a ring finger on a woman's pointer finger, you have three fingers pointing back at her. Which means she's the most important. Yes, yes, three, and you're only one. Yeah. I will See? also say in response to why I get married at all, I thought about that, and then I was like, oh, when you... <laughs> no, I'm trying to help people out there. This Ugh. is why you should get married. Well, yeah, okay, why? Is because when you're just like, oh, he has a girlfriend. That doesn't really stop people from stealing your man. But if you're like, oh, <laughs> he's married. That's your advice on why to get married? <laughs> I'm just saying. Because yeah. it's harder for somebody to steal your man? Uh, no, I'm saying there's merit in merit merit people just take it more seriously the 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 person involved takes it more seriously you take it more seriously people don't cheat as easily it's just like better to say you're married Mm. it just makes it more strong than to be like oh i'm seeing that person i would actually have a baby i would actually say that i didn't want to have a baby with someone who wasn't like very committed to our life because my mom had that and it sucked i would actually say that the reason a, a reason to get married is the actual is the flip side of the argument you made on why you should stay single mm-hmm. is that uh and and I think your argument is actually valid. I mean one of the positive things about staying not married is that when you want to dissolve a relationship and most uh, many relationships do dissolve, it's very easy to say this isn't working, let's go our separate ways. When you're married it's much more complex. However, there's a stability that comes with uh with marriage where you go Obviously, this is there are exceptions to this rule, uh, uh, but where you go, okay, despite the fact that we're in the middle of a tension now, or despite the fact that we're in a fallow period in our relationship, because we're married, we're not 
breaking up is not the first thought. It's it's like we're going to work through this and get past this because now we're in something deeper than just a dating situation. So it just depends on kind of where you're. Yeah, there's from. like more levels to the breakup. <laughs> 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 um, and lawyers and money. We actually have more levels to this podcast. Um, and one of those levels is our secrets hotline. And we thought we could play a few before we say goodnight. All right, let's hear a few. Hey, Mosh. Hey, Tosh. Uh, I have a secret. So my wife is pretty, um, let's just call her sober. And she's anti anything that is uh, not sobering. And my buddy uh, last year gave me a couple of acid tabs. And so I was, you know, trying to figure out the best time to take them and never could settle on a time. Uh, But this past year, we just celebrated, last month actually, just celebrated our one-year anniversary. And we decided to go to Disneyland um, in Paris. So I thought, what the heck? Why don't I just take it then? So unbeknownst to her and still unbeknownst to her, I (laughs) dropped acid in Disney. And I... Had a fucking incredible time, and I feel a little guilty that I didn't tell her. I still haven't told her, but you know, at the same time, uh, I don't feel guilty at all because it would have been a buzzkill for both of us, frankly. So, yeah, that's my secret. Um, love the show, and we hope you guys are okay. Okay, bye. That is very risky. That is so. I mean, he must be experienced with uh, with totally. acid because <laughs> two tabs. <laughs> I mean, it's in, and he brought him to Paris. <laughs> That's like a federal offense. Like you could, mm, you could like that. lose your children. Oh yeah. You have a bad trip with your wife with no context on why you're having a bad trip. She's like, oh no. Yeah. He's had a psychic break here at. Uh, at Disneyland, we're at the Magic Kingdom. This happened to me once, though. I I um, ate mushrooms and uh, took a couple, I think, Percocet, and then went to a Dodger game. And then afterwards was with people that didn't know. And then afterwards we went to a restaurant, and I fainted in the restaurant. Whoa. But it was right next to par- like a paramedics, like a fire station. So I woke up to like firemen standing over me. Oh, my God. And they were like, have you taken any drugs? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and my friends were like, what? <laughs> what? Now, like, imagine yeah. that very scenario, but you wake up and it's Goofy, Mickey, and Donald Duck <laughs> looking over you asking those questions. See, now, when he started that comp- that that whole thing, I was like, that would be awesome to just slice a tiny bit for a year and a half and just microdose acid every day. You think you can microdose two hits of acid for a year and a half? <laughs> What are you going to put it through a shredder? <laughs> no, she's got like a little exacto knife. She's just like, mm, this how long? Be- how long do you think two hits of acid would leave you with a super micro dose? For, if you're doing it every day? Yeah. Four days. That's it? Yes. Oh. Yeah, you just take like a fourth of it. Probably. Or or eight days at the most, I think. Also, yeah. I don't know. Is it evenly distributed in the paper as well? Like, we don't know that. Well, let me just say this. I would not have done that. Let me just say this. That was awesome. I think that's really cool. I love the idea of like a real Puritan next to a dude that's just tripping balls. And she's <laughs> well, just like, he, didn't, he couldn't tell. Why her. Do you, you know what I want to see is the photo of them coming I down am. the thing. Where he <laughs> <laughs> in Space he's Mountain. Just like, He's loving life, and she's just still very prim and proper. No, but you're so right. He could have. It's not that he was being. Um, he was being deceitful. She wasn't really open to it. It's, so I, I see it's that a he kind of deceit. It is, but he didn't quite have an option because she just happens. He to doesn't be seem a, like he's sweating it too much. A to bit. Be no, he shouldn't be. But it is also very funny to have somebody in your life that's close to you like that. That's like a Puritan. Very well. Is she Puritan or does she have a problem? And that's why she's like that. Yeah, but you can't be. Like it, it, listen, the truth is, if you yeah. got a problem with drugs and the way that you fuck you. The way, yeah, that's right. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself. If you're listening, you have a problem with drugs. Fuck you. No, what I'm saying, if you have a problem with drugs and you're more than i don't know uh six months sober and your solution to your problem with drugs is to tell the people around you that they can't do drugs uh, i think there's something missing well first of all if it's drugs you're probably going to not be hanging out with those people well anymore. i mean heroin but and if stuff it's alcohol, like that yeah what about lsd well, LSD seems like I, it's people one you don't, should mention. People don't really go <laughs> You're to right. You're like, what? I just took some mescaline. <laughs> Listen, what is your problem, you square? If you, if it's alcohol, you should never expect anyone around you to alter their life. A hundred percent. What about weed? 
Weed too. I don't know. I don't. I think weed too. Yeah. I. I. I'm not against somebody. I don't smoking want weed. anybody I, to do any. But if somebody's doing coke, like you're not like coke's different. Yeah. All those hi- uh, those dro- coke is bad because it affects people around you. It's like so annoying. But coke is good because it feels good. Well, coke is no. It. It's bad for the people around you. Though. But it's good though. It is good. We're on it right now, <laughs> Nick and I. Uh, I think this is pretty funny. But what I would have recommended was taking your acid with a buddy that wasn't sober. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't right, like don't do tabs, that. But his his trip was probably better because it was double. Dude, I would love to do acid at Disneyland as a sober person. Personally, I would love to hit take does, two tabs of acid at Disneyland. But what what really though? Disneyland it seems Paris. like the, it was not as Even good better. of an experience for him. Is that what you were just saying? No, he seemed like he had a great time. Yeah, but I wouldn't have enjoyed that because the whole time I'd be like, all right, I just gotta play it cool. Like I'm not right. really like leaning into it. Right, right, okay, right. Okay, quick cue for you former druggies. Yeah, you're going to Paris. Yeah, where do you put the acid? Oh, on the head in the my dick hole. Definitely. Right, Nick? Yeah. Your dick we, hole. I would say dick hole or ball dick hole. No, come on. Hole. I'm really serious because I want to know. Honestly, no. Here's acid what I do. Acid. I, I put it in a, in a pocket of a jean, roll up the jean, and put it as one of 20 jeans. Sure. In acid in is suitcase. easy. Acid's easy. Why? Yeah. You put it just, in, I just put it in my toiletry kit. They're pieces of paper. Like, nobody would ever know. Uh, uh, real drugs? P- co- actual Coke? That, you're going to get in more trouble. I'm telling you, the dr- if you want to travel with drugs, I've been told this. You put it in your toiletries, or you put it in, like... Uh, if you have like a little bag for cables, because when they see cables, they just think, oh, there's cables. Mm-hmm. They don't think what's in the cables. They just see cables and are like, that's the cable bag. Got it. What's over here? See, that's why Midnight Express happened, because they didn't have uh, cable bags back then, because yeah. there was less electronic equipment. Um, shall we move on to one more secret? A couple more. more. All right. There we go. One more secret. Honey, I have to go tend to our child. Yeah, me too. It's Yeah, and it's a freezing co- out here. It's a co-parenting. Okay, we'll do one more secret. We'll call it a night. Um, I was just cleaning my house and realized that my secret is that, um, well, I love my dog. That's not a secret. The secret is that sometimes I can't wait, um, for the day that he's not around anymore. So I can not have to vacuum up dog hair every day, not all day. I can't stand it. I'm so sick of his hair everywhere. I'm going nuts. Thanks. I don't even notice the dog hair anymore because the piss and the shit is everywhere. Right, and the behavioral issues and the barking and the warts There's and the so many terrible things. The besides congestive the heart hair. failure and you have that Roomba that works, dude. I got a Roomba. I got to tell you, they're not a sponsor of this podcast, but I'll do a free ad. That shit is so tight. It's like my better. I'm actually closer to the Roomba right now. Than your parents than well than Natasha. No, our mm. kid was like. Daddy loves the Roomba more than us, right, Mom? Because <laughs> I said that a long time ago to you, but she's like repeating it now. Dude, that thing is Here so. Here comes gr- Dad's side piece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he got a wet one. He got a wet mop Roomba and a dry, dry pick up the dog hair Roomba. Okay, Nick, just humor me. Let me just show you he's my. Got, he's got an own apartment that he keeps the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take care of you, baby. No, actually, l- listen. Here's the real truth. Uh, just ask me how much I like my Roomba. How how much do you like your Roomba? I love it so much. It's a replace my son. I used to have a wooden <laughs> son. It's outdated technology. This is a real uh-huh. robot. Then it clean up after you. <laughs> it's a me, Geppetto. I, I, I know who you are. Yes, from earlier. Yeah, yeah you, the cleaner and <laughs> yes, the tailor. It's me, the tailor, but now I have Roomba. <laughs> I don't know Italian accent exactly. Uh, Natasha Leggero. Uh, shall we go tend to our child? Yeah, I think we have to, honey. Nick, you're the best, and you're our neighbor. Thanks so, for coming over last minute. And you're so funny. Thanks and for having me. Everybody, follow Nick on at Me Show You Fashion on Instagram, or go see his stand up live, or watch his various stand up specials on whatever form of streaming media. Or if you don't want fashion, just follow at Nick Thune on at, Instagram. At That's Nick Thune. Funny. That's the classic. Who doesn't want fashion, honey? That's the classic. You can follow me, of course, at. If at you don't want fashion, get off this podcast. No, and you can follow me, of course, on Instagram at. Geppetto the Puppeteer Taylor uh, Mm -hmm. and Natasha can be found at Roomba.com at Roomba.com and Natasha can be found at things I regret about my engagement Um, (laughs) honey I just thought it was cute that you didn't know which finger I'm glad you didn't I knew I know there's no way I put it on your ring finger because uh, on your index finger because I didn't know there was a ring finger 
<laughs> I don't know what happened. I believe your memory is true, but it's not that I was like, it goes here, right? Is it here? I mean, what do you think I am? Oh, cool guy. Well, it's, this has been real and yeah, real good. It's been real. Okay. Goodbye and good night, everybody. Nick, okay. Thanks. Uh, we'll be hanging out very soon since we yeah. literally can touch each other's fingers from over a gate. <laughs> <laughs>